All right, so we, we got DMT down. We sure did. We got free the code. Oh, yeah, we did. What else do you love? Graphene. I love graphene. Let's dig into some graphene, shall oh, we? I'd love to. I think I, we're going to build it. I'm really, I'm, I just wanted you to come on and just spill your mind about whatever you want to think about. So what do you love about graphene, Ian? The first thing I was thinking is that is that we can take carbon dioxide out of the air and condense it um, onto palladium. I don't know if condense is the exact scientific term of what you okay. do but you can actually turn carbon dioxide into graphene really so instead of all this worry about we have to reduce emissions i think we just need to start reusing the emissions as graphene um can is that possible yeah uh wow. in fact there's an article if right now if you type if you search i'm gonna for, do it Go yeah ahead. Go um ahead. what do you want me to look carbon up? dioxide make graphene out of carbon dioxide there, in, in august of 2020 this they had a big breakthrough with it using palladium, which is the same metal that they use for cold fusion. Producing graphene from carbon dioxide, direct synthesis of technology or technological material, graphene from greenhouse gas carbon dioxide. This is really interesting. Uh, even because uh, so Perseverance landed on Mars yesterday and it actually has this thing called MOXIE and it's a an experiment. What, what they're trying to do is create oxygen out of the, the carbon dioxide on Mars. So if, if we can make oxygen and graphene that's it out of carbon dioxide we can go everywhere wow like we can live on mars very easy Cause, oh because i mean what can we do with graphene I, I i'm gonna give you this wow. question a lot of stuff we can make wiring out of it we can make clothing out of it we can make food out of it we can make housing we can make food out of, it. out of it yeah it's pure carbon you can eat it wow it's amazing uh it's stronger than steel you can make buildings out of it we can make touchscreen wallpaper out of it we'll make batteries out of it that yes. are super conductors and super capacitors i think we can store lightning in graphene batteries really? i think you can also dope it with other materials like metamaterials so yeah. like nano nickel and nano silver can and they give it wildly complex properties there's this thing called twistronics they've been working on where you take two sheets of graphene and you twist them 1.7 degrees different from each other okay and they it makes them turn in turns them into a super capacitor wow or a superconductor maybe is what it is superconductor um and we should really get a graphene scientist on and just go into his or her brain if anyone knows a graphene scientist that they can hook me up email me at adamcastirl at gmail.com uh, I'm sure you would love to to come on yes, the show. Even and, just uh, to listen to that, just, that'd be amazing. <laughs> well, you know, but I'd love to come in and yeah, and, yeah. and ask questions. And yeah, because it, it would be nice to have someone like you, because you um, clearly you love a translator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah translator. that's my goal is to be the human translator for the from the tech <laughs> to the regular people, oh, regular is, people to the tech. Man, would would this be incredible? So, what exactly is graphene? It's pure carbon, hexagonally latticed, and you understand it immediately if you look up a picture of it. Okay. Um, it's it, there's nothing like it. It looks like a honeycomb, uh, but it's a flat mono layer of atomic graphene bound C six uh, in in shapes of C six. I pick, pulled up Wikipedia. I, I'm not the yeah the first image you see. You don't really like Wikipedia that much because they're not the you, you know yeah, it's not really the most not, trust not vetted they, yeah it's not it's it's a bunch of people putting up what they think they know i love um, this office by the way thank you this is thank really you. nice appreciate that the, the look nicest. at look how clean this is you can kind of see it right here right yeah it says graphene is an atomic scale hexagonal lattice made of carbon atoms so it's just the way the carbon atoms are aligned yeah, yeah. in in just a beautiful pure look at this it's symmetry a, an incredible structure yeah. honeycomb it's this that's it's so strong that's why bees make their you know the honeycombs in hexagons yeah, because it's, like it's the strongest and you know the most com conde you know condensed with the strength they can fit the most it's pretty cool it's like they knew something there um, they knew it buckminster fuller was experimenting with what they he called bucky balls or what were called bucky balls they were now known as fullerenes and these are carbon fullerines? yeah it's it's a ball of carbon a ball of graphene basically and okay. you can put things inside of the ball and send it through nanotubes uh -huh. which you can also make out of graphene so you can make a graphene sheet and then fold it over on itself to make a tube out of it mm -hmm. you can send these bucky balls or these fullerenes through the tube and put like medicine in, in the in the fullerenes and transport them into people's bodies you could send i mean geez the sky's the limits with when you want to talk about things you can send um data in glass uh battery power you could like tiny little like we were nuclear batteries things that we were i think we investigated those last year a little bit book buck minster fuller was an american architect system theorist author designer inventor and futurist and uh yeah he i'm just what he, a freaking boss he My would goodness. probably be a deep dive target 
one really? of the most interesting men of the 20th century. We should. You want to. You want to do a deep dive yeah, with me? Let's big do it. Time. Yeah, yeah. He's, Let's do Buck, Buckminster Fuller. He's a big um, inspiration for Bill Ottman, who founded Mines. I like Bill. He, he Very was nice big guy. On geodesic domes. Um, he was. He loved building geodesic domes because of the structural integrity. So of when the, when of did he hexic. did he who who discovered graphene? Was it Buckminster? Well, or? no, he, he it wasn't, and it was a scientist in like 2001 that just kind of oh, felt, recent. Yeah, they they had scotch tape on graphite and they pulled it off and they found this weird hexagonal structure and they're like what is this strange carbon structure that is coming off on scotch tape and yeah. they they looked into it and they realized wow these have pretty magical properties and they wow. won the they won the nobel prize for it oh that's awesome yeah the, the him buck mr fuller and uh, being credited with these buckyballs i don't really know the correlation because i don't think they had the technology to understand um monoatomic carbon at the time yeah Buckminster was born in 1895 and died in 1983 lived a long life incredible uh, human yeah yeah cool sunglasses or he wore like really cool little thick, black thick thick uh, oh you got a picture I, of him? eyeglasses goggles yeah let me yeah, bring, he's the man bringing this up here I'll just show everybody I just I just uh Bucky duck ducked it just to see what what popped up Buckminster Fuller man yeah, that's cool yeah man graphene I mean that's because I, I love thinking about how we're gonna live in space Right, because I think we are moving. That's we're very close. We're getting that. We're we're literally seeing the age of space happen right now in front of our eyes. Like Starship, like we just we're we're actually in the motion of putting boots on the ground on Mars in the next twenty years. By twenty thirty nine is is their proposed plan. We're going back to the moon in four three years. It's happening. We're doing it. We're going. We're getting there. You know, once Starship happens and it starts working. And you know, he, you know, Elon's successful with it, which he will be. He doesn't give up. We're gonna be spacefaring. You know, we got these companies being created, the Gateway Foundation. You know, creating different uh, construction pieces that are gonna be in space, constructing space stations. So the 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 wheels are in motion to move towards space. So the problem is food and oxygen and water. And if we can find that among the stars and we can turn CO2, uh, carbon dioxide into food and oxygen, yeah, those two things, which from what I'm gathering, NASA is working on Moxie, which is creating oxygen out of it and graphene. If we can eat it, we can create the necessary, you know, amino acids and all the different things that a human body needs to, to survive. And then water, of course. Uh, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, and if you look at all the all the methane, that's where all the hydrogen is to make the water. Mm. Um, although there's tons of water on the moon and it, and Mars. Yeah, that's what I meant to say is, oh, okay. is Mars. If there's tons of water on the moon, I didn't know that, but thank there you is. God for putting the, it through my mouth just on the, then. On the South Pole. Wow. Yeah, they found it. Wow. So uh, on asteroids, I wonder if we'll be able just to create it out of uh, pockets of hydrogen. I'm sure at some point you'll be able to just condense it. Uh, Probably. But you need it's the energy source. You need the energy. To, to really put that heat and cold through a system to condense it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I'm thinking is, as I was saying earlier about the graphene twistronics, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you twist two sheets of graphene, 1.7 degrees. If you took a buckyball, a fullerene, a ball of graphene, and you put it inside a slightly small, a slightly larger ball of graphene. 1.5 degrees or whatever. And then you twist it to 1.7 degrees. Uh -huh. Maybe you're looking at the beginning of a Dyson sphere. Maybe you're creating- like a personal Dyson sphere. Yeah, like a fusion- generator in space if you're going to create a superconductor a spheric a superconductor not only would it be multi-dimensional be three-dimensional so you'd have like magnitudes more more power but where does it get the energy from maybe it, the sun it stores good it, question right? that's it, that's kind of up in the air yeah it would be like an energy storage device or or um transmitter so do you think that it would be possible to create some sort of a we actually did an episode Back when you were a regular on the show, we talked about artificial photosynthesis. Remember that? Mm -hmm. If if they can convert that technology to the outside of a Dyson graphene sphere, then it would almost be like a perpetual engine. Like if it can take energy from the sun and store into the battery, like in a cell, like you know, basically a, yeah. a solar cell. Um, but that doesn't, that's made of graphene and then it in itself is graphene that stores the energy. I, I mean, I, obviously I'm not, uh, you know, well versed in this, but yeah, I, yeah. I can see that this could be another 
you know, venture into the future. Mm-hmm. That's going to help solve a lot of issues. Right now it's batteries and that, that would be amazing. Batteries but, are terrible yeah. for the environment. People I, don't understand how terrible batteries are. Lithium ions. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, everyone's like green energy and it's like, yeah, but it's not green. No. These nuclear batteries that we talked about last year. Yes. The nuclear batteries. Storing nuclear waste in glass. I just did, uh, I, I just talked about thorium a lot. Oh, we um, were talking about that last night. Yes. Thorium, thorium is salt. incredible. Yeah. Molten salt. So um, you, but it's there's it's zero emissions. It's uh, very very low in radioactivity, especially compared to uranium. You can't make nuclear weapons out of the stuff, so it eliminates the the threat of people making nuclear weapons out of it. It's amazing. So if we can if we can move forward, that's the problem. If we can move forward, J.P. Morgan didn't want to move forward because he couldn't mo- monopolize it. He couldn't sell it. Same with Bill Gates. He couldn't sell open source free code. He had to proprietize it, I guess. I don't know what the yeah. word is. But proprietize it? So we're at the cusp right now of either having the next step be open source or proprietized. Yeah. I love that Elon Musk open source God. Tesla's patents. Elon Musk. What an inspiration. I salute you, sir. Get over here, homie. What a boss. We're waiting for you. He and Joe Rogan are... Trans- I know. I saw this. Trans- up. Well, you were telling me yeah, this about this last night. They're going to alter Austin, Texas first. Dude, thank goodness. And then probably make a colony on the Mars. I've been to Austin. Austin's awesome. I love Austin. Austin's, a, uh, it's, Texas is awesome. Did you go to 6th Street I while you were there? I think so. I, I hung out, I, I, one of my best friends lives in Austin, so I, I've visited him multiple times. Austin, There's man. a beautiful river that goes right through yeah. it. I've, uh, you know, got a kayak and was kayaking around. Oh. It's a beautiful place. I walked from South Austin to North Austin and nice. back. I mean, it was like a four That's hour the best walk. Way to it was really so nice. See someplace. It's incredible. It's like really beautiful. And spot. I like that it's hot. It's like 80 degrees speed limits in Texas. Yeah, that's true. Man, much love to what people in Texas are going through. And that should be like My a canary goodness. in the coal mine of anything that yeah. we really need to transmute this uh, energy system ASAP. Yeah. Our, our infrastructure is terrible. Dude, I talked about it the other day. Three hurricanes that one year. Do you remember that like two years ago we had three hurricanes in a year? Yeah. And that was like up from one, you know, maybe. Well, I mean, but that's, that's like that another happens canary. though. That happens. Hurricanes do happen. But three in a year. That was like, whoa, the klaxons the, are the, ringing. The, how, how vicious they were though. Yeah. You know, because they, they form and then yeah. don't hit land. Oh, I heard that we're coming out of an ice age. Did I tell you about that? I thought I heard that we were going into an. Ice it looks age. like we're in a glaciation period where the ice. So basically, twelve thousand eight hundred years ago, we got peppered by comets and right. it melted most of the glacier. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and destroyed still, Tartaria. Yeah, wiped out Atlantis. All the the Mu. I mm. think was these like Eastern Asian people that are now all that Southeast. I feel like Asia that's a whole nother can of worms. Ancient open up. Yeah, dude. All that all that <laughs> culture that was lost in Southeast Asia that's yeah. now underwater. If you if you zoom out on Google Maps yeah. and look at the light blue outside Japan, it's like there's all those underwater all temples above water. and stuff. Jeez, it's like, dude. How how did that how did that happen? Um. So what it, I was reading about. So what it looks like is that the the ice age was interrupted by the cometary impact, but we're still in it. And, oh. we're, and it, we're, that's why there's ice all over the earth. It's because we're still in the ice age and it's just melting away. We're leaving the ice age now. So it's a natural phenomenon. I think the sea will rise, but we're leaving the ice age. So what do okay. you think about global warming? Do you think global warming is what's going to happen with or without our help? Uh, yeah, but I think we're speeding it up with pumping carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Okay. Not necessarily to our detriment. I don't know. I mean, a comet's way more deadly than a Absolutely. Heat, melting the ice caps. So if we created these graphene machines that take C- or carbon dioxide and turn it into oxygen, food, more graphene, whatever we want, is it going to slow it down we could is it gonna stop but it? no joke or is it gonna happen no matter the what? methane's wrecking it too there's a lot of, the methane's really messing up our ozone from it, uh cow, cow farts yeah it's all the poop all the cow, i don't know poop. it's like in what is carbon there, monoxide. there's a lot there's a lot of cow poop there's a lot of like cow, burning cow farts pig farts yeah methane is pretty nasty chemical to pump into the air like whenever there's a a volcanic eruption well, that's the thing when there's a volcanic eruption there's a huge amount of methane release in the dude atmosphere. it dumps so much it's ridiculous they talk about it and it's like oh that it so that's been going on yeah always volcanoes you know this, this is an active planet the you human know? It's volcano a core that shoots stuff into the atmosphere yeah. you know so when i say we're accelerating it maybe we're accelerating by like 0.002 percent i don't know <laughs> okay. but it seems like it is minuscule acceler- yeah minuscule but we could probably slow it down but i don't think that we can stop it i mean i you know oh. the, the, the tartarians couldn't stop it 
you know, the, the, uh, do you think they were advanced enough to be able to stop it? No, that's okay. the problem. And neither were the dinosaurs. That was the problem. Obviously not. Yeah. You got to be able to stop it. That's kind of like the lesson I've learned. Well, NASA is actually working on a new pro, uh, project that it, I forget the name of it. Um, I was reading an article about it the other day and they're trying to figure out how to nudge asteroids, um, with, um, you know, satellites or spacecraft to get in, not get onto it and move it. But because we know trajectories of everything, you know, that's how Perseverance landed on Mars. It didn't go to Mars. It went way out here where Mars oh, awesome. was going to be. You know, they, they know where it is. You know, they have most of the objects that are flying around, like Halley's Comet, for example. Like we know where it's going to be in 100 years <clears throat> because we can track where it's going to be and we know exactly where it's going to be. So it's it's the objects that we can't see, like Oumuamua, you know, that, that cigar-shaped thing that was an interstellar object that came in and left. But that on itself is a freaky thing because it accelerated in a weird way. It was moving erratically. We, oh. it's that that's a weird thing. But it's those objects that we need to worry about because there it could potentially be six months out. Like right. we oh we see something that's there's a seventy percent chance going to hit Earth. If we found that in six months, we'd be screwed. Right? Like, now. like there could be an screwed. object larger than the Milky Way traveling faster than the milky way headed towards the milky way we wouldn't know it that's true so there's really no way these interstellar speed balls we, you know that's that's its own interstellar deep, speed balls yeah. the the biggest threat to yeah. human society the unknown <laughs> um i'm i'm like i'm making a joke out of it but it's straight up dude that's some truth in the i wonder there. if there's god that's like that's one of the things I wonder, like, Just is there, yeah, like, God, the way. Like, I know the magnetosphere is kind of a buffer and like the sun is creating a ma its own magnetosphere around yep. the solar system as a buffer. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's God's way of protecting us. So is the sun God? The, that's the idea. I mean, the sun God was like, that was my first tattoo. I have a sun right here. Cause I, I always thought in my life, I'm like, whether or not God exists, I would not be here without the sun. Right, and that you were... sun right there, that that sun in the sky that we, you know, literally all things grow from the energy that it, it pumps onto this planet. I that's I know for a fact that I owe my life to that. You were someone's sun. Maybe one day you'll have a sun. Like that word is so pervasive, and it's spelled differently, obviously, but it's True. the same freaking word if you say it out loud. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the sun is God. I think it's our <laughs> local God. Ooh, I like the ringer, the dinger. Someone got me this antique bell. That is beautiful. Isn't it nice? Shout out. To Shout out to Jason Dixon. That's who, uh, nice who job, got it for me. Jason. That's awesome. That was uh, very cool. I got... Oh, it's mechanical. I got awesome, uh, awesome chat. I Shout out to chat. Maybe chat maybe the best uh, followers on the internet. I, I, I mean, I'm inclined to agree with you. I, I've been in Discord with you guys. And the Shout Adam's out to my Discord. My Discord's lit. fantastic. My uh -huh. my chat's fantastic. My followers are, are fantastic. I know. I like that you guys are listening. Like, it's a real, like, in, intelligent conversation. Absolutely. 